Why do we do it? Those are two questions I want to answer in today's video. Now, before I start, there are a lot of videos on YouTube already on how to focus tech, and I wouldn't be making a video unless it was different. And um, what I want you to know right at the top is near the end um, in Photoshop, there is a trick I use that makes you know the whole process go a lot smoother, a lot easier that I haven't seen in any videos yet. So that's why I want to release this one. I want to show you, you know, just how to do this in a much easier, kind of more efficient way. So stay tuned for that. Before we get going, um, if anyone kind of wondering what is focus stacking, um, it's simply a method that we use in digital photography to make our images sharper. Um, anybody that's taken a photo knows kind of, you know, focus is a really important thing. <laughs> uh, what's in focus is sharp. And so uh, there are different ways, different points you can focus on. Um, typically, you know, we kind of look at infinity focus. So that's technically everything should be in focus and if you're focused to infinity. So, but usually that's the case, you know, for objects that are far away from our lens. Um, but as you get closer and closer to that lens, you know that there's kind of a fall off of focus where, you know, those objects that are right in front of you maybe aren't in focus, maybe they're a little bit blurry. And so focus to infinity um, is usually kind of, you know, if you're gonna take a single exposure, I think that's maybe the sharpest photo you have. There are other alternatives. Um, there's hyperfocal distance, which is a measurement, kind of a way, you know, from the front element of your lens. Um, it's fairly technical. There are apps out there that can help you determine what that is, depending on your settings, you know, your camera, that kind of thing, and you know, what aperture you're using. It all depends on a lot of kind of factors, but you can find a measurement, you know, measure away from your lens, focus on that point, and then everything in that, you know, photo should be acceptably sharp, um, which is a fun way of saying nothing is sharp. <laughs> everything is a little bit blurry, except for what's, you know, you focused on. So the only way to get everything in focus, especially if you're using a wide angle lens and you're really low to the ground and some of those elements are really close, the only way to do that is to focus deck. Now, it starts in the field. So if you're in the field, you set up your shot, you've taken one or two, you've seen that, you know, oh, that, you know, this part in a photo, you can tell you maybe this, you know, this, this ice or whatever, that's, you know, I really want this in focus, but it's a little bit soft. It's not quite sharp. So, you know, how do I overcome that? So maybe you stop down to F16 and, you know, you notice, oh man, it's even softer, you know, introduced diffraction now into our photo. So, you know, what can I do? So in the field, um, focus stacking is essentially just taking the same picture of the same scene with the same settings. The only difference is, is that you change your focus point in each exposure. So say for one photo, I've taken a picture of you know, the mountains in the background. The next time I focus, you know, in the mid ground and next in the foreground. So I'm gonna cut to some video here from the Canadian Rocky series and kind of show you kind of what I'm looking at when I focus stack. Um, over here we have some, quite a bit of cloud cover. So I'm not sure if we're gonna catch a light or not. We'll see. Um, right now the light on these peaks is beautiful. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these photos. I'll, I'm gonna have to focus stack them um, just because this front section here, if I zoom in on my photo, too far. Uh, I'm zooming down on my photo here. It could be a lot sharper than it is right now. It's a little bit blurry, so um, if I go ahead and focus stack them, probably three shots, one in the mountain here, one in the center of my frame, and then one right on this bubble kind of over right here, and then focus stack those together in Photoshop, I should get a nice sharp scene all the way through, so. Okay, so now we've got our images in our camera and we gotta take them to the computer. So let's jump over here, we'll put them in Photoshop and we'll see what we can come up with. Okay, so now we have everything loaded, catalog into Lightroom, um, and we have, you know, if you're a camera raw user, um, you've opened up so, you know, these images into camera raw. And so we have these three images are the three that were taken at the same time in the video and they're focus stacked. So there's different focus points for every single photo, um, every one of these three photos. And first thing we have to do is make our Lightroom adjustments. So 
I'm going to go into here and this is I've zeroed everything out so we can go through this. Um, I'm not going to go through too much detail. Again, there's a video I made, Lightroom Basics. I'll link it right here and you guys can check that one out uh, if you want to get more detail on how I do this. But I'm going to kind of fly through here so we can get to the focus stacking part. So um, I'm going to warm this up a bit um, and kind of Bring some magenta in. Um, bring it down a bit here. And leave contrast alone. I'll make contrast adjustments with the, uh, the tone curve. Bring my highlights down. And bring my shadows up. my whites up a bit, my blacks. I get a kind of flat and neutral kind of looking image. Um, bring a little bit of dehaze in and then add some vibrancy into this. Um, kind of leave saturation alone. So uh, a little bit of contrast in here. All right. Good. Um, leave that alone. Uh, sharpening, I turn off. I do my sharpening in Photoshop. Um, noise reduction, um, I'll put a little bit on, but I'll do more in Photoshop later. So, um, have a lot of corrections always. Remove Corbat aberrations. Yes. So, looks like we're ready to go. So, I'm going to have to make sure that those three photos all have the same settings. So, what I'm going to do is go back to my library module. I'm going to go shift and arrow key over or shift click or command or control click all of my exposures that I want to copy these over. Click on sync settings and then synchronize. Now Lightroom has synced all these so if I go over we're looking at the thumbnail over here you see those settings have been copied Across. So now I've got to get these into Photoshop. So right click, edit in. Um, I can open as layers in Photoshop, which is what I want to do here. If you are a Camera Raw user, you're going to have to run a script in Photoshop to open them as layers that way. So, um, but here I'm going to click as open as layers in Photoshop. Okay, so we've opened them in Photoshop. We have these three layers on this side, there's three exposures. Photoshop has been so kind as to open them as layers. So if we go through and check these off, you can see what's happened is what's called focus breathing. Um, nothing's happened with the tripod. I haven't moved in between exposures. There might be some minor moving, um, but when you uh, lenses and stuff, when you when you refocus, um, focus breathing happens. So it kind of shifts kind of the, uh, the way the lens sees the image. And so there's always going to be some movement in between, you know, your exposures, regardless of whether you need moving or not. Um, things may have moved, but anyways, you can see that there is a difference. So if I were to go and just blend these photos where they are, then none of these elements are going to be lined up. So first thing we have to do is align all of these layers. So we're going to go through, shift click, select all, edit, and auto align layers. Uh, we're going to leave auto on and then these two just leave off. And Photoshop is going to work on getting those aligned for us. Okay, Photoshop has aligned everything for us, we think. So we'll double check, make sure we did a good job. So you can see, you know, the element like the mountain and you know, some of this ice has seemed to have stayed the same throughout. Um, we're just going to double check by changing our blend mode on the top layer to different. And so what's that do? what that's doing is telling Photoshop to look for differences between layers. So anything that's black means that there's no difference between the layers. So we can expect things that, you know, like light in here and, you know, the light on the peaks, light on the snow to be different. Um, but it looks like overall it's done a really good job of 
running everything. So we'll turn that back down to normal. And then we're going to uh, command zero, control zero, get out, uh, and just crop in, crop out this transparent area on the outside. So we're gonna grab our crop tool or hit C. I'll go to two, three, which is what this is. And I'm just gonna crop in the edges. The reason we're gonna do that is just so that we remove any sort of artifacting that could happen on the edges um, with a focus breathing, you know, as that kind of moves the image around, Photoshop has to move the different layers around to make them fit. So what that's doing is kind of cropping out the excess. So when you're focus stacking, always leave a little bit of room so you can crop in. We've cropped everything. Um, everything is, you know, uh, there's no artifacts on the outside anymore. This is kind of the step that no one tells you about. I don't know why. Uh, first thing you do is select all, drag it down and copy it. I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna stick all these in a group. Oops. Stick them all in a group, label them original. We'll save those for later. We'll even turn them off so Photoshop doesn't look at them. So we're gonna select these three, the copies. We're gonna go edit, auto blend layers. We leave it on stack images. We're not doing a panorama. We're gonna try and stack them. And Photoshop is gonna look at different elements in these layers and find you know the sharpest points in each. We'll leave seamless tones and colors checked. Uh, Photoshop is gonna look at you know the different colors and tones in the image and you know try and you know match everything the best that it can. So um, typically we kind of try and do that the best we can in Lightroom. And we sync settings across so Photoshop will kind of look after any sort of discrepancies that happen. Um, in the field, so, um, but you are taking photos kind of one after the other, so there shouldn't be too much difference between your images, so. Okay, so Photoshop has looked at all the files. You can see here in the mask, you know, there's a lot of, you know, it's taken elements from all three of them and pieced together. You can even see some of the mask on here, so, um, and it's supposedly spit out a sharp image. So what we're gonna do, Drag this down to group. Okay, and supposedly this is gonna be sharp all the way around. So one thing Photoshop I find struggles to do is to do a 100% clean job at this. And so what can happen is that Photoshop can pick, you know, stuff that maybe isn't sharp and blur it together. Um, that cloud there and might have a look at here. So what I do is I zoom in and I look for any areas that Photoshop may have you know, done a really kind of poor job at blending. But overall, I think did a decent job this time around. The only thing I saw was that cloud and there's an area here that's not nice. So. Like I said, Photoshop never does 100% every time. I've always found something in every single one. So always take a really close look at your file afterwards just to make sure. Um, and so this is where that trick really comes in handy. So I'm gonna go here, I see this grossness happened here. So I'm gonna go into my original file and turn this off. I'm gonna find the exposure that I took that's sharpest along this ridge line. It looks like this one. I'm going to bring that up and I'm going to drag it and put it above everything. I'm going to put a mask on it. I'm going to hit Command or Control I and hide everything there. And I'm going to find my brush over here or hit B. Make sure my color is set on white. And I'm just going to paint that back in. So now I have everything sharp that I need to. Um, and so I'm going to go over here where I saw that cloud make sure that that's okay. So finding areas that Photoshop kind of really messed up. So what I might do is just tell Photoshop to ignore everything that it did in the sky region, just so my clouds are all consistent. So one thing I might do 
is just kind of bring my brush all the way around here. Make sure that transition is completely clean. Okay, I'm hit the backslash key and I can finish that up. Oop, looks wrong white. Again, uh, if I alt click, you can see my mask, and I can just clean up anything that's uh, left over. Okay, so now we know that we're looking at that original file just in the sky and this region in here. So now we can zoom in and see if Photoshop screwed up anywhere else. So we're going to take a quick look through um, our exposure. Kind of curious what this looks like here so um, we're going to find our sharp exposure here um, not that one looks like it could be this one so we bring that up same thing command i turn our group back on and brush in some sharpness so anywhere our photoshop may have kind of messed up and and drop the ball, we're going to bring in the original exposures, put them on top, and then brush in that sharp layer. So that's the trick that no one ever tells you about, and I don't understand why. Um, Photoshop never does a great job at this, but it does a better job than you know manually going through and trying to brush in everything and using different gradients and that kind of thing. So. Um, you can't get too mad at it. I think it does a pretty good job generally, um, but it does need some help. So that is how you help Photoshop. Okay, so now that we're generally satisfied with what Photoshop has done, um, take a look around here. We even some of this area in here. So now we're going to grab our, our last exposure, bring it up. So you can see could be sharper here. So same thing, command I, and then we're just going to brush in that sharpness again. So anywhere where we have issues with Photoshop, we're going to bring in our layers and kind of do it yourself. So so that's it. That's how you focus stack. And then we're going to hit Shift, Alt, Command, E. And that's going to put a fresh layer on top. That's it, guys. That's focus stacking. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. If you have any questions, hit me in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. You've done it helpful. Um, I know I found it <laughs> crazy, crazy helpful once I figured out just to put those layers on top, brush in my own sharpness, fix Photoshop's kind of screw ups. Um, man, that saved me hours. So hope it helps you. Let me know if it does by giving me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you like this content and want to see more. Um, anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Cheers.